Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs and this week I am using the adorable Bird's Eye View stamp set. This is super popular, everybody I know wants it and I have had so much fun playing with it. Um, for our card today, we're gonna make a floating circle. We're gonna use our Stampin' Blends and I'm gonna show you how to use one of our new sets of uh, masks. Um, because this stamp set has no sentiments, I pulled out the go-to greetings. This is such a wonderful set. You've got just basic greetings in different fonts, and we're going to just use that tiny little hello. All right, um, the first thing we're going to do is our masking. That will give us some time to dry up a little bit before we proceed to put it on our card. I have a piece of our new bubble bath cardstock. I love bubble bath, it's so pretty. And I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit of adhesive right there on the back and kind of stick it down to my grid paper. Now these are the new four square masks and I'm using this one that, I don't know, just has a bunch of little squares in it. And if you use your grid paper, you can line up your mask and your cardstock with the lines and so you know for sure that your mask is straight let me look on the side too okay so i'm going to tape that down i'm just using some post-it tape and then i'm going to take one of my smaller uh, blending brushes and some bubble bath ink and i'm going to start off over on the edge just because when you set your blending brush down it leaves kind of a hard mar mark right at first See, if you set it down and you start doing like that, the first one is always real heavy. So I always try to start off on the grid paper and then go um, onto the, the page after I've you know, made that hard mark there. All right, so I'm just gonna run it around, get your arm work out for the day. And then when you flip it over, it looks like that. Now you can always lay it back down. Mine's pretty light right here but I'm not worried about it because my focal point is going to be right in the middle anyway. But um, if you keep it all taped down, you can just lay your mask right back down and hit those spots that you think need more ink. All right, so now let's make our floating square. A floating or circle, floating circle. Um, a floating circle is a die cut piece that looks like the strips are just floating but i'm sure you can see the reflection in the camera we're going to use a window sheet um, to get those strips perfect and actually i'm going to bring my grid paper back because the grid paper again will help you um, line all of those up perfectly all right now i will tell you my colors as we go i'm just going to set this kind of right here in this corner like this um, these are, let's see, what size are they? Half inch strips. And we're gonna use the largest of the stylus shape circles. So your piece of window sheet needs to be about three and a fourth by three and a fourth. All right, I'm gonna take my liquid glue and just lightly put some glue on the back. And I'm gonna line it up down here with the edge. This is very burst. And then I have a piece of our gorgeous gingham designer series paper, also the berry burst color. Put that across. Next, Blackberry Bliss. Put that one right there. Um, you know, I know some somebody's gonna ask, how far apart did you put your strips and honestly I'm just eyeballing it I think it's probably a quarter of an inch if you use your grid paper you can use those to measure I just you know I'm kind of one of those fly by the seat of my pants I'm just gonna add it on there without really measuring too much all right so there is our square and we're gonna cut that out with our cut and emboss machine, but I'm gonna give that a little bit of time to dry as well. And let's color our birds while we wait. Uh, these birds are so stinking cute. I'm gonna stamp the, a big one and a little one in Memento Black. Okay, and we're gonna do that on basic white cardstock. And 
And then I pulled out this color palette. Let me move them all in so you can see them. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of them. I can't really exactly remember what I used on the card. I think I remember. Um, I think we're gonna start with Fresh Freesia Light. So I believe that is Fresh Freesia Light right here. All right, we'll start with the big bird. I kind of was thinking this was kind of like a, a mama bird and her baby bird, and this would make a cute little baby card maybe. So I wanted them to match but not be exactly the same. All right, I'm gonna take dark fresh freesia and add some shadows down under her wing and kind of that way, like that. You can kind of blend that all in like that. There, now take your light and again, come up here, color all the way in. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of dark All right, now let's see, I gotta put my lids back on the right markers. Now I'm gonna take Blackberry Bliss dark or light, and you'll see Blackberry Bliss is pretty similar. And I'm gonna color in some of those. Well, it's not similar, it coordinates. That's what I'm trying to say, it coordinates. So Blackberry Bliss light, I'm gonna color in some of the stripes. That. And then I'm going to come back with my, let's use dark fresh freesia and color in the rest of that. And you can just color right over that dark blackberry bliss color like that. Okay. And let's give her a little daffodil delight beak. All right, for our baby, we're gonna use our bubble bath color, and I'm gonna start with my light. Color all over. I'm using the bullet tip end. This is the tip of my uh, marker that I prefer to use. Um, but it's got a brush end as well, so make sure you play around with yours and see which you like best. I feel like I can stay in the lines a little bit better with this bullet tip. So that's why I, I tend to stick with that one because the other one I always kind of get out of the lines. All right, baby bird is done. Let's give her a little beak. Now there are no dies that go with this stamp set, but lucky for us, we have paper snips and paper snips are the best fussy cutting scissors there are. I'm gonna take my cardstock and cut most of the cardstock out around her. That's gonna make it much easier. And then I'm just gonna slowly go around the outside of the black line. I am keeping the image in the middle of my scissor blades. All right, notice I'm not going too close to the end of the scissors. And I'm using my opposite hand to turn. Okay, and you'll notice that the lines here on our cute little bird are not all that straight. They're kind of rough. Um, that's the way the artist drew them. So your cutting doesn't have to be perfect. And if you stay right on the outside of that black line, leaving just a tiny little white kind of cloud around it or border, your eye is really only gonna focus on, let's see if I can do this without cutting off her leg. Um, your eye is just gonna focus on that black line. See how easy that is? Okay, now we're gonna do the baby. The baby is even easier because she's smaller. And our paper snips are about $10 and they are in our catalog and online. And if you don't have them, I highly encourage you to add them to your next order. I always joke around that they make great hair cutting scissors. <laughs> if you ever need to do a little trim at home, or your kids, or yourself, these are good in a pinch. Now, I'm not a professional hairstylist, of course, so I say that tongue in cheek, but they are really, really sharp and really, really good. All right, so now just doop. 
and we've got our baby. Okay, let's bring over our cut and emboss machine. I think we've given our, our floating strips enough time to dry. Now we're gonna be cutting through two layers here. So we're gonna have to go back and forth just to make sure it cuts through all the way. And if for some reason your circle doesn't cut out when you do back and front, you can always flip it over like this and run it through and that always takes care of anything I have that hasn't cut out. And then you just kind of peel it off and if you have any little stubborn pieces, just grab your scissors or your snips and snip it off. And there we go. And there's your magic floating circle. So of course the floating circle idea can um, be used with any shape really. All right, now we have got a piece of vellum here. I'm gonna attach my floating circle to the vellum first and I'm gonna use dimensionals. Actually, let's see, I lied, I'm gonna do this different. I'm gonna put dimensionals on my floating circle right behind those strips, but I am gonna put my vellum down flat and I'm gonna just use regular stamp and seal, mostly in the middle there. And really you can't even see it on light colored paper. Um, you cannot see stamp and seal through your vellum. So you can even put a little bit up there and you won't even see it. All right, now we'll take our circle and put it right in the middle. This feels crooked. Let's see if I can straighten it up or did I use too much adhesive? There we go. All right, there we go. All right, now peel off your backings and put your circle right there. Now get your little birds and add them to the circle. Now I have a couple other videos using this uh, little stamp set. So if you're looking for more ideas, make sure you click the link on YouTube, hop back over to my blog and uh, you'll find the links there or um, go back to my YouTube channel and you'll find them there as well. They should all be together. Um, I have five projects total on my blog too. So you do wanna go back and visit there as well. All right, this is a, um, a basic white heart that I have cut out uh, with the Give It A Whirl dies. And I just stamped the hello in Berry Burst ink up in the left corner. And put a dimensional on the back of that and just kind of tuck it in right there behind our little birds. I'm gonna move her over a little bit like that. And now let's add some linen thread. And I like to fold my linen thread in half so that I have two pieces and then just tie them like you have one piece in your hand. No, no special way, just regular tying. And then you have kind of a fuller bow. All right, get a mini glue dot here. Put that down here. Now, last but not least, we're gonna add some of our adorable iridescent pearls. And I'm gonna use my take your pick tool, the putty end will pick those right up and add them to your card. Like that. And last but not least, we need to put our card on our card base. And I just have a basic white thick card base and I am gonna add it with dimensionals because I love dimensionals. All of my cards. I don't think I've ever made a card without dimensionals. I think it just adds so much to your card. All right, and just center that right there. Now the measurements for all of these pieces and the supply list are over on my blog. Make sure you click the link here on YouTube, go back and grab that free PDF. All right, everybody, I hope you have fun stamping. Thanks for joining me, bye-bye.